All right, great to meet you, uh, Dave and Matt. Uh, so what's the magic behind uh, your brand new sign camera everyone's super excited about? Yeah, we're very excited too. Uh, this is the Blackmagic Ursa Cine Immersive yeah. Camera. Uh, and it was designed to shoot immersive video for the Apple Vision Pro. Yeah, and the must be like, so it's kind of bigger than regular VR cameras we used to. So maybe you can do like quick unboxing what's sure. inside of this beast. Yeah, so this camera is designed as a cinema camera. And actually from here back, it's the same as our Ursa Cine line of cameras. Yeah. And so when it's recording, it's recording in all raw and very high resolution. So we have two lenses, two sensors, and we're recording 8K per eye at 90 frames a second in RAW. Awesome. Yeah. And uh, uh, so what are like, what comes in the box? Mm -hmm. So what, and many creators are, are start asking us, what's with other pre-orders? Mm -hmm. Ben, can I, they, can, I can address that. We're pre-orders are accepted right now. Yeah. You go to blackmagicdesign.com and you look under the product listings for our Ursa Cine line, you'll see a link to a pre-order. So you yeah. pre-order there. Uh, the, the final packaging hasn't been uh, established yet. We're, we're not setting a timeline on final delivery, but the pre-orders are coming in. And what you're looking at here is going to be what the final product looks like. And for those folks that already did a pre-order, when can they put their hands so the delivery, the final uh, manufacturing and delivery yeah. hasn't been determined yet. So we're going to be uh, announcing that probably right after NAB. Oh, NAB. So it's yeah. probably like, I guess, half of some middle summer, like uh, September. We're at, we're at this point now where we have a working unit that's not a uh, prototype. So usually yeah. that'll give us a good indication that it's, it's near term. I just can't tell you when that's exactly going to happen. Yeah. So, so we're just excited to kind of get this out <laughs> with a sneak peek at South by Southwest. Yeah. So that's the actually working unit and you can just take it and start filming with it right away, right? Correct. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so in the box yeah. with this camera, what you'll get, obviously you have the camera body, which has the lenses, you'll get a top mount, you'll get the base plate, and then you're going to get the eight terabyte media module, which if we turn this around towards the camera, you'll see here. So that will come with the eight terabyte media yeah. module and that all runs $29,995. Awesome. Cool. And any like uh, difference for people in US, Europe, Australia, who is going to get the first? No, they'll be dispersed equally around the world. Equally around. So a global, global launch on the product. Yeah. And then uh, all the other accessories that would have come with some of our other Ursa Cine line cameras yeah. and our Ursa uh, Mini Pro line of cameras will also fit on this. So they're, they're compatible. Awesome. So just for our creators, big part of the camera are fans. Hmm. Yeah. Sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, it's high performance inside. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're uh, capturing a lot of data uh, yeah. at that high resolution and high frame rate. And so, yeah, there's, there's nice vents to keep everything cool and operating in a variety of environments. And it's already recording right now. I can see it. Does so it? we're not rolling right now, but we can go ahead and hit record. Yeah, and now cool. we're recording, which you can see on this monitor here. Awesome. That's our assistant side monitor. Yeah. And we also have our flip out screen on this yeah. side. And I have spent quite some time next to this camera. It's quite quiet, right? It's like many VR cameras have this problem is that fans get loud, it gets hot. So, so far, it just like... Uh, so this has been yeah. on for four hours already. And if you feel it, it's, it's not hot at all. Yeah, it's not hot. It's just yeah. like yeah. mildly warm. Cool, uh, let's keep going. So we now, the field of view is uh, 200 degrees uh, that you pack nicely into 180 for just like... So we're we're actually delivering at 180. The yeah. lenses do shoot a little bit wider than 180. Um, yeah. But as you'll see on the, uh, on the overlay here, that's actually defining your 180 degree field of view. Yeah. And so that's what gets delivered to the, yeah. the platforms. And did you have any like parts of this is probably like high fidelity cinematic studio camera. Do you see it like studio camera or you can just get it out in the wild and film whatever you want with it? Yeah, you can shoot in all sorts of environments, whether it's a studio or it's in the desert or in the snow. You know, the camera is meant to capture these immersive yeah. environments in any environment. Cool. The difference is when you're when you're really shooting with the immersive, it's not just 3D. And so what you want to do is consider what your audience is going to be experiencing. 
by understanding where the camera is in that environment, right? So this should, this should be seen as your audience. So if you're moving it too fast or you're, you're pitching it yeah. up and down or rolling, those kind of effects inside of a head-mounted display are going to be, you know, uncomfortable. So you want to be conscientious about that. But there's no limitation to taking a camera that's been shot. Uh, this, this, uh, this unit itself has been out shooting in, in, uh, in outdoor environments. Uh, like uh, Matt says, a whole range of, of, uh, of uh, temperatures, things like that, and it performs just fine. Yeah, and if, is it still recording? No, I, oh, no, I stopped. Yeah, let, let's just keep it recording right, just we'll for testing. Uh, cool. Maybe if you can offload uh, some um, footage that we can put it online and people can, like, the, the first request everyone asking, I want to see it, like... Uh, so I totally understand. If you want to see the footage, uh, at some point in the future, we're going to post some footage. Yeah. But uh, you, at this moment, you, not yet. If you go on our website, you'll see how all of our cameras, there's been an official shoot. That media then is available to everybody simultaneously. You yeah. can download all the raw footage. But it's not live yet, right? Uh, it is it's not. So that, that'll be similar to what we do with this unit here. We won't be uh, sending uh, that's right. footage out until we shoot it uh, professionally. Now, if you want to see the quality of this sensor, yeah. um, you can go to our Ursa 12K LF site and yeah. download the footage from there. Oh. It's the same sensor, but two of them in this camera. And so that's the same quality of image you'll see. That's the best insight we have got so far. And we will be uploading it on BOVR. Uh, cool. Uh, so let's keep going. And uh, what should creators know about operating this camera? Like any unique uh, yeah. rules, tricks? Well, so some of the features of the camera, yeah. I would say. Um, so because these lenses are built in with this unit, yeah. Uh, they're calibrated specifically for this camera. And so that calibration lives with the B-RAW file and travels all the way through post. Yeah. So that's going to make your post-production process quite a bit easier. Yeah. So that's a real key thing about this for creators. It simplifies the entire process, including post. Awesome. So you say it's more like, so once you export those, uh, import those files, export whatever, into DaVinci, Resolve Immersive, right? There is a DaVinci Resolve Immersive coming. Yeah, so DaVinci Resolve is going to have uh, immersive features yeah. that are going to be able to access these files and manipulate them. Yeah, there won't be a separate need. version of Resolve. It'll yeah. just be uh, an added feature set inside yeah. the existing Resolve. That's right. And if you compare it, uh, DaVinci Resolve uh, uh, with immersive features with Mystica that many people are using now, anything like you guys uh, well, we stand out? Yeah, we're not really sure about uh, other people's tools, but in terms of Resolve, yeah. the idea is to create an entire week ecosystem from yeah. camera through post and through delivery all in one package. Awesome. Um, and so that's that's our goal that we're trying to bring to creators. Yeah, curious what rendering time would be because for us to go through the whole pipeline, sometimes it takes, especially if we are filming pass through with alpha channel, it already takes one week for 8K footage for one hour long video with this camera is probably going to double but if the quality is there we absolutely want to do it yeah the quality is definitely there um right now we're just demoing this camera yeah uh, but at nab we're going to get a little bit more into detail on the post-production side of the workflow awesome so uh can't wait and does this camera like this setup is it like are there any like upgrades you recommend or just out of the box camera you can start using immediately? Yeah, out of the box, using the camera immediately, I would maybe recommend getting a couple extra media modules yeah. so that you can swap your cards as you're shooting throughout the day yeah. or even the media dock so you can read these media modules and dump them to your storage. So the media module itself, let me show your audience here. So this media mag, let me go ahead and stop our recording and then we'll eject that. And so these are hot swappable. So I would take this to my DIT, they yeah. would do the offload, and then I would get a new card and throw it back in and start recording. Without having to power cycle or anything, I can just start recording as soon as that module reads. Just one sec. There you go. And now we're rolling again. It's actually quite fast uh, yeah. to get things started. Absolutely. Cool. And... One of the most super requested features is director's screen in VR. So this thing is cool, but if it's not in VR, like directors are missing like the points. So do you have any good news for Apple Vision Pro and Quest users? 
So the original request or the original uh, announcement of the camera was during WWDC last year uh, by Apple. Uh, there's no official uh, mention of how we're going to do that integration, but I think you can assume that there's going to be a tighter relationship there because we've been building that camera to the specifications to deliver that platform. Yeah. I think you can assume there's going to be something there. We just don't have any official to say about it. NAB is probably going to be where you're going to want to see all that. Yeah. So and uh, do you maybe like just a hint how you expect the camera will be sending a stream to headset is it like wired is it wireless again and nab is probably going to be where those coming are going soon to be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're just here really doing a, as matt said we're doing just a preview on the camera yeah. itself just as a uh, you know just the base unit and, and not yeah. really the big ecosystem so, uh, what's the magic with your lenses? Uh, it's basically, is it lenses? Is this calibration? Is this like... Uh, Gosh, I would say all of the above. I mean, yeah. the magic that makes this camera work yeah. is that we're paying attention to all the different details that you need to get a quality image out of this camera. And so, it's the sensor, it's the lenses that we chose, it's how we install it, how we calibrate it, and it's B-RAW taking all that information and metadata through the entire post process. That's the secret. Cool. Uh, and I wish, again, in DOVR, we try to squeeze out every pixel, every unit of, uh, every pixel of video, every unit of uh, metadata, just to, like, uh, create this uh, super native experience. And, uh, uh, again, I cannot wait. The first thing we are going to do we, once uh, the camera gets released, we will create uh, hemisphere with uh, exact specifications of those lens so we can keep native format instead uh, converting it to equi rectangular and we can probably get native 200 degree field of view we can uh, swipe uh, lenses to restore the covered area and uh, yeah and, and obviously we still uh, depth maps are you guys uh, so depth maps have to be done with triangulation right so whatever you're doing specifically for your platform, you know, is fine by us, and we're gonna go ahead and provide the camera that can record a great image. Awesome, um, cool. And again, also like the sync, we will explore. Like, uh, hopefully, we can find a workflow to get uh, live director's preview monoscope, even if monoscopic, even if lower resolution on Quest devices. In case like. Uh, it will be too complete. I mean, like every every pre hope every pre hopefully will get native one, and for Quest users, if it's I mean, like if there is a way, we will try to do it. Uh, cool. Moving on, uh, people are asking if uh, um, post production process can be done with Final Cut Pro. In terms of post production, I think that's something that's going to get uh, discussed more at NAB. Yeah, uh, and obviously we're definitely talking about the camera today and then eventually we'll be talking about the integration specifically with uh, DaVinci Resolve. Cool and have you guys been thinking what could be filmed with this camera that was not possible to film before and like specific use case that something that you have in mind developing? Gosh I'll say that we're just excited to see what the creators do, yeah. what filmmakers do with it. Um, it's a new medium, it's very exciting and immersive to be able to take your audience there and so we're excited what the what the creatives come up with yeah i think that, that one of the things that we've been hearing about i think is going to be able to explore is because we've made the process simpler by having basically an you know camera you can just take off the shelf go out and start shooting things where most of the vr was more of a kind of a bespoke manufacturing of the cameras and, and the pipeline was difficult so we're going to see people that are that have been avoiding that because of the complexity actually getting into it corporate training those kind of areas where it seems somewhat mundane compared to our cinema or experiences where people have looked at 3d or, or immersive hey i'm going to be looking at this grand view yeah now we're talking about no i'm putting you in a very specific manufacturing uh you know pipeline training or something like that so it's going to be great to see what people do with it because we're going to make it easy for them to go all the way through the process and use the tools and not think less about the think less about the technology and more about the creativity that's really kind of black magic's philosophy all the way along yeah. we don't want to be in between you and your your message to your to your audience so if we can limit the, the, the need of overhead of the technology yeah and make it easy for you great yeah so just quick update the camera is still like not warm at all and it's recording no fans no nothing Great yeah, job on that. Yeah. And guys, maybe can we have a quick demo how you do like training for your like corporate 
customers or some, so maybe you can show us some menus. Yeah, how, kind of how walk through the menus and yeah. stuff. Sure. Oh, so let's do it. All right. So, all right. So obviously we have a record button here, which we can start and stop at any time. We also have a physical record button there. Uh, and we'll have another record button here. So lots of options yeah. for uh, starting or stopping a record, including the opposite screen here, the assistant side. You can start and stop there as well. Uh, currently in this uh, user interface, you can toggle between the left and the Good. right eyes, which we're doing here with these left and right buttons. And then we have this punch in button so you can get a preview of the image. And you guys uh, aren't a little bit larger any footage with the camera. Uh, but you'll still be capturing this whole circle. No. So you'll see here, this outer circle Maybe represents the full 180 degree field of view. And then this smaller inner box represents the rough field of view of the Apple Vision Pro. So that can be really useful in framing your shots up. So that's kind of key features of the UI there. Uh, let's see, you can also customize your monitoring settings to a variety of different things. So for LCD1, which is this first LCD we're working with, um, let me go to my first tab there. Uh, I can either display that with the 3D LUT or off, or turn the grid on or off. And in this uh, moment, what I'm using is the grid on, and I set my grid to horizon. So if we go back here, you'll see there's gonna be a little crosshair reticle. And as I tilt this camera, you'll see that it gets offset from my guide. Now that helps me level this camera so I'm shooting flat and my horizon is always level. So that's a really useful tool when you're shooting to make sure this camera is nice and flat. Uh, because in VR, as you know, uh, when the viewer puts on the goggles, they're panning, they're tilting, yeah. not necessarily the camera. Vertical, Vertical offset is no go. That's right, that's right, 100%. Um, those, so those are the basic features of the UI right here. Yeah, maybe we can come uh, ask Caro, maybe if you can just like one meter for standing in front of the camera, just maybe I can take a quick photo, uh, maybe like here. Uh, yeah. And if we can, okay, we don't have to move closer, so cool. And again, like uh, perfectly if you could get uh, this uh, actual uh, uh, footage and see it in VR, but like uh, just like, interpolating what can be done is already incredible so you say it's two hour record time recording time at maximum specs right uh that's right it does depend on your compression so yeah. 12 to 1 is a compression that we've seen works really well for managing your data size yeah and still gives you a very high quality image yeah uh just for you to maybe like uh, discussion so we are now converting the whole platform to av1 Okay. And but like I guess with black magic rows, we can we can just convert it to anything we want, right? That's yeah, black cool. magic raw gives you a really great starting point, and you can still adjust your your variety of settings, including white balance and exposure and whatnot. Uh, awesome. Uh, thank you, Matt. Uh, thank you, Dave. Uh, super excited. We'll be looking forward to get this camera released, to get the first unit shipped to other creators, and again. Cannot wait uh, for 16K footage with uh, high fidelity visuals. For Apple Vision Pro, I guess, like we still haven't fully tested it yet, but rumors are it's like 12K uh, resolution supported. For, um, for Quest, it's definitely has to be downscaled to 8K. Even if downscaled to 8K, it's still much better quality once filmed in 16K compared once it's filmed in native 8K. So we, we, we expect this uh, uh, quality boost, visuals boost. And